predators and wild turkey populations. Okay, if I've got fewer of those, I'll have more of these, it'll hatch off more of those. That's about it. <laughs> now, if you've got fewer of those, you may have more of those that will hatch into more of those. But you're never going to get rid of all your predators, and it's probably not going to be cost effective uh, anyways. So you're going to hear a lot of uh, brood habitat stuff again, just like you've heard all day long. And we're driving it home how important your brood habitat is. But you can manage your predator population. And most predation events will occur during the nesting and brooder egg season. That's when the turkeys are most vulnerable, the hens when they're nesting. And after they hatch, those poults are very vulnerable for, vulnerable for a few weeks. Until they can fly, they can fly at about 10, when they're about 10 days old. But they're still uh, going to lose a lot of poults from when they hatch till, till the fall population. Nest and young poultry are susceptible to predators. And the average clutch size is about 11 eggs. Well, first off, about half of those nesting attempts will fail due to abandonment or depredation. Something will flush that hen off the nest, and she doesn't always come back to the nest. Oftentimes, she won't come back. I know some of the nests that we disrupted at Skyline when I was working with Dr. Speak, the hens that we had radio zone with the radio telemetry project did not come back. Um, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. But then they get flushed off the nest and then the net eggs are eaten by a predator like a raccoon or a possum or some other predator. And that's probably enemy number one as far as your nest predator on turkey nests. They love turkey eggs. Raccoons. And possums. Snakes, avian predators like crows, they do eat turkey eggs. A successful nesting attempt, that's what you're shooting for. They hatch out without being eaten up by some kind of predator. And the clutch hatches out after about 26, 28 days of incubation. And that's what you want is a, a pole, but they're they still have a long road to hoe after they had the first few weeks. Very, very vulnerable. And you've heard from the other presenters that uh, if they've got good brood habitat and a lot of good brood habitat on your property, they've got a better chance of making it into the fall population. Predators cause the majority of brood losses. But, you know, inclement weather also counts for mortality in those poles. Only about 30% of the poults will survive into the fall population. And that's probably pretty good, actually. In some recent studies in the southeast, based on brood surveys, some of those have been much less than that. Some of that has resulted in 10% of those poults making in the fall population. So it varies in cycles from year to year. And your turkey poult predators and adult predators at times, like the bobcat, coyotes, fox, other pole juvenile turkey predators. All right, protected avian predators such as eagles, hawks, and owls. They will occasionally catch poles. They will occasionally catch adult turkeys. However, they make a lot more attempts if they're unsuccessful left than they are successful on adult, healthy adult turkeys. Feral dogs. In one Alabama study, uh, feral dogs accounted for 29% of the known deaths of 111 poles. Feral cats. Predation events of hens on nests have been documented. Bobcats on incubated hens in one Alabama study. But few healthy adult wild turkeys are get caught by predators. And with the loss of the cougar and wolf in Alabama, the gobbler's main predator is the human. But having said that, 
um, predators do make attempts to catch turkeys. And, and you can see here this golden eagle <coughs> is attempting to catch this Jake Dogger right here. Now, I don't know if he was successful or not. I got this picture sent to me off the internet. Sometimes they Photoshop these things, and you're always a little bit app apprehensive about the uh, validity of it. But this one looks authentic, to be honest with you. The primary adult turkey predator, what do you think that is? Man, hunters. Right there. But the legal and ethical hunter is not detrimental to turkey population. But poaching can have adverse effects and should be addressed through enforcement and land management strategies. You know, having your property posted, having gates erected, you know, everything you do, don't plant wildlife openings in view of, of uh, public roads, those kind of things. And when you find out about any kind of poaching activity, then getting that information uh, to our personnel so they, so they can act on that. Predator control. Well, with predation events from spring nests to fall flocks, the perception is that predators are a significant limiting factor to turkey population. Do you think this is really the case, based on everything you've heard today? What do y'all think? Is it habitat or predators? Habitat. habitat. No, it's not usually the case. Predator control is usually ineffective and cost prohibitive, but you can implement management of predators just like you would any other wildlife population. I view it as a tool as far as trapping. You know, we hunting is a good tool uh, for managing game species. Trapping is a good tool for managing fur bearer populations. And so if you look, if you view it in that manner, it's a good thing. Just keep in mind, you're not going to eliminate all your predators. It's not going to be cost effective. You're never going to eliminate all the predators. Habitat management is the key, just as you've heard from all these other excellent presenters today. That is the key. And I'm not going to really spend a lot of time on what you've already heard, but landscape, managing the entire landscape for turkeys, like prescribed fire. Cool season and growing season burns. Wildlife friendly timber harvest. And also retaining your important soft and hard mass, mass trees. You know, your acorns, dogwoods, those kind of trees. You want to retain those in your stand. Uh, opening up the understory with equipment like a mulcher. You want to, if you want to try to provide root habitat, you want to do that, and I, I know this sounds like a broken record, but you want to do that not just in wildlife openings or in roads throughout the landscape. Your whole entire forest stand can be nesting and brood rearing habitat. Road drum chopping is an excellent way to get into some real thick cover. It's impenetrable for turkeys. Adults and poles can't travel through stuff like this, but you can open it up with equipment where they can access these areas to catch insects. Wildlife openings are very important. Roads, have you, as you've already seen in these presentations earlier today, are very important. And when I visit landowners, I guess it's probably one of the most, besides the lack of fire, using your roads, and managing roads is probably one of the mo most underutilized things in turkey management. Planting roads. Now if you don't own your own property, you may be in a hunting club, you may not be able to widen that road out to 60 foot wide like would be optimum. Uh, but if you've got roads, you may be in a hunting club, you can plant these roads, you have the option of doing nothing and not providing any kind of root habitat or food or you can still plant what you got. And in a young plantation or clear cut, while you've still got plenty of daylight, you can plant these rows, even though they're not very wide, 
But use what you got. They lie to you is important. And you can see right here, this is probably about, you know, not too many years beyond this right here would I be able to plant this because of all the shading that's going to take place. But this is brown top millet. I think this was actually a, a mix of brown top and proso millet, which is excellent, excellent for attracting insects. And those hens and broods are going to use those areas. A cool season mix in clover is very important. Providing diversity of habitat types. Your cool season forages, warm season forages, just having a variety. And the edges and fallow fields provide nesting and brood rearing habitat. Now let's get into some predator management. Legal trapping of fur bearers can be integrated into a comprehensive wild turkey management plan. That should include, you know, this is just part of a management plan for your property, managing your timber, providing, you know, doing the thinning, doing the burning, having brood rearing habitat out in your forest stand, in your roads, in your openings. But you can also integrate some habitat, some trapping as a tool to manage those fur bear populations. Just remember that habitat management should be your focus. <laughs> And this is actually a raccoon that's in a steel trap right there. Nest predators such as raccoon should be the primary target of management efforts. Now I get off on a tangent here that y'all probably were not expecting, and it might be somewhat controversial, but the silent predator. And I think this is the, the only thing that hasn't been covered today so far that won't be repeated information. All right, there's a pile of corn. Now, how can that be a, called a predator? Choke <laughs> Well, you know, actually, actually there have been cases where we've had some turkeys in trapping situations that have had too much corn uh, at, the, at the trap side. But the way I'm, the reason I say silent predator is, um, well, for one thing, aflatoxin. Have any of y'all ever heard of aflatoxin? Which is a fungus that can be found in contaminated corn and other small grains. Uh, so, sites where you place feed doubt for wildlife, whether it's deer or turkey, well, for turkeys, it can be an issue. I'll talk about that. <coughs> Potential diseases and parasites associated with supplemental feeding wild turkeys, avian pox. It's a viral disease transmitted by biting insects. And that's what happens to those tumor like drugs <coughs> on the head of a turkey there result from avian pox. Blackhead, these are the two bad ones that can wipe out or really severely reduce turkey populations in areas. Blackhead is a pathogen transmitted to turkeys in contaminated soil. Now what does that have to do with supplemental feeding? Well, remember the word potential diseases and parasites. And this is blackhead. You can see the necrosis in the liver of this turkey. Not, not good things. Those are bad, bad deals right there. Corn, oftentimes corn is too contaminated Rubber uses ends up as wildlife food. I know we had a, a dairy farmer in Mobile County, this was several years ago, had his corn tested. He couldn't feed it to his dairy cattle because of the, the amount of aflatoxin in the corn. So he ended up selling his corn to folks, you know, for wildlife. Deer corn, I guess it was labeled as. And so it was fed to, to wildlife. That's what happens oftentimes. Although there has been a lot of work or research on this, of lab results from an experiment that was conduct conducted at the Southeast Cooperative Wildlife Disease Study in Georgia found that aflatoxin contamination 
as low as 100 parts per billion could decrease the immune functions in wild turkeys. Hopes, and this was in, considered this was in lab conditions, this has not been repeated that I'm aware of out in, in wild populations, but if it decreases the immune function of wild turkeys, they may die of something else later on. You may not be able to tie it directly to the contaminated feed that they ate, but that's enough to, to cause turkey managers, wildlife managers, biologists, cause concern. That's something we really need to focus on more research in, is uh, the issues with aflatoxin and, and feed and turkeys. And it's not a recommended turkey practice, turkey management practice, uh, it's supplemental feeding. Okay, feeders attract nest predators. Hmm. Well, <laughs> if you're going to put feeders out in the woods, you can expect, and I'm sure some of y'all have got game cameras that you placed on your property, maybe getting pictures of deer and turkey, but you're going to also eventually get pictures of raccoons where you've got feeders. Well, what have you done? If you've got pretty good brood habitat, nesting habitat, and you've got feeders, what do you think the potential is for those predators to start keying in on nest sites and broods? Well, it could be pretty high. You pretty much are artificially in increasing the population of predators to this site. Uh, so that should be cause for concern in managing turkeys. And we got, I've got this book here. It was published a couple of years ago. I think most of y'all picked up a copy. You can also download it electronically from our website, outdooralabama.com. Uh, some pretty good turkey management practices are outlined in, in this book.